This is the Minuet by Alexander Reinigal. I will start with the performance model and then I will follow up with a few ways to help you learn this piece. It's a lovely piece, isn't it? So a minuet is a dance in three-fourths time. So I hope as you hear it played that it makes you feel like you want to dance. That there's a lightness to it, uh, maybe even a little bit of joy associated with it for you. So if you're starting to learn this piece, there's something really great that I want to start talking to you about. This involves the left hand. So some of us out there maybe are not the strongest bass clef readers yet. Still in the learning phase. So if this is you, the minuet will fit you like a glove because the left hand actually has only two notes that you play throughout the entire piece. So if you'd put your hand in C position for the left hand, we're an octave below the middle of the piano, you'll see down here my thumb on G and my fifth finger on C. So we're looking at a C position, C being the lowest note where my pinky is placed. And then the first measure, we're starting with the G, and the third measure, we find the note D, fourth finger. And if you glance through the rest of the music, that's it. Those are the only two notes. So even if you're not really fast at reading the bass clef, you can tell, well, if the note is higher on the staff, it's probably going to be G, my thumb. And if the note's around the middle of the bass clef, then that's probably going to be a fourth finger D. So that takes a little bit of the pressure off there. The right hand is more involved. We have two main articulations. Articulations is how you play the notes. So we have staccato and legato that come out quite prominently in this piece. So measure one, for example, we have our fifth finger here on the D. Right hand, your thumb is on G. So this is a G position, G five fingers here. Okay, so we have fifth finger on D with just a light touch. Measure three. There's the A, all staccato, measure five. There it is again, and measure six. So he camps out a little bit on this first section, first eight measures with those staccato quarter notes there. So I'm just gonna let my hand be relaxed, make sure my elbow is slightly away from the body here so that my fifth finger is nice and curved to have some good support, and just gently push down on the key and let it release. It's not a very harsh staccato here. We're only at mezzo forte. And this is not a style that calls for really hard staccatos. There are some styles that do, but not this one. Okay, so we have a little bit more of the staccato. If you look with me in the B section, starting around measure nine, I see measure nine, measure 10, measure 11. There's more staccato notes. So I think that can be played pretty simply in that manner. And then we have some legato. So the curvy lines, the slurs over the right hand notes. That's our second articulation. So notice here on measure two at the beginning, we have B, G, G. So you notice I'm using my wrist and my elbow to slide toward the left and connect the B to the G. Measure four. A little five finger scale from G all the way up to D on measure five. So you can again use the wrist and the elbow if you need to to help you get more of a flow. And then just a simple release and up release of the wrist. I like to see with that staccato touch there, I feel like there's a balloon tied to my wrist and it just gently lifts my wrist off the keyboard. I think that's a great visualization for us as pianists. And I actually borrowed that idea from a violin method book um, from the Blackwells. I thought it was a really great idea in their Fiddle Time series, but you can use it here at the piano as well. So let's try that at measure four. I'm gonna start right there on the slur. So beat one, two, three, one, two, three, lift, two, three, and then we slur back to the left. Okay, so the second section then, uh, there's some more legatos, exactly the same 
movement from measure 12 to 13. You'll do that G all the way up to D with the fifth finger measures 12 to the beginning of measure 13. So we don't have to go over that part again. However, on the last two measures, 15 and 16, we have one more slur, and so I'll go over that with you in the right hand. Notice that we have adjacent notes, A and B. They repeat, and then we end on the note G. So I like to just take the wrist, almost like you're opening a doorknob, or turning a doorknob, I mean. You'll just have a very slight rotation in the wrist like that. And of course, you'll, end, you'll finish that going to the G with a slight turn to the, uh, to the left to get the G in the, into the line there. So if you want to start with me, I'm going to start at measure 14 through 16 to get you into that. So measure 14, 2, 3, turn, release. And you know, you want to make sure actually on measure 14 that you don't play the G staccato both times. I think I didn't do a good job right there. So let's try that again. We have so you have a difference of articulation that works out a little better. Okay, so legato, staccato, right hand, I think you're going to take most of the practice time. <laughs> we have more to do, notes wise, rhythm wise, articulation. So the right hand should have some hands alone practice there. Left hand, once you have placed your G and D in that C hand position, there's really no extra movement. We're not shifting the hand. There's nothing strange going on. Once you're in position, your left elbow is slightly away from the body, supporting your thumb and your fourth finger, you're pretty much good to go, just steady with that accompaniment dotted half note. So I hope that gives you some great ideas on how exactly to navigate learning this minuet. It's a wonderful piece and I hope that you enjoy playing it.